This is Michael Oral of MobileBurn.com and today I have with me the LG VX9600 Versa. New device from LG for Verizon that's uh, somewhat like the Dare. It has a 480 by 240 pixel touchscreen and a simple slab form factor. Now as the name Versa implies uh, the device is meant to be a little more versatile than normal devices. As such it comes with uh, a QWERTY module that attaches. It's actually a, a new back cover. We take this back cover off and replace it with the QWERTY module. You can see that I've removed the regular back off of the phone and I have in my hand the QWERTY module that gets added on. What we're going to do is you can see the contacts right here match up with these contacts there. Just drop it in and click it in. And now we've got ourselves a new QWERTY capable device. comes with a faux leather case around the QWERTY module and an additional OLED display on the exterior. There's also call end and call send buttons down at the bottom for when you're placing a call because you can talk on the device while it's closed thanks to this earpiece and the microphone down at the bottom. Open it up again. The QWERTY keyboard itself is very big and spacious but it, it makes use of a questionable layout. You know, Instead of making use of a full four rows for the keys where you could have you know three full rows for letters and then you know symbols and other things like that, periods and that kind of stuff down at the bottom. Instead what LG has chose to do is basically make a three row keyboard layout with a full row of numbers. So you have the space bar being located between the letters, and that makes makes it so the letters don't line up the way they normally would on a real keyboard on a personal computer or a laptop or something like that. In spite of that, the keys have a really nice feel to them though, and they're backlit well, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the keyboard overall. Other features on the device, the exterior, you can see there's a call end and power button, call send, and then there's a dedicated clear slash back key, also activates voice dialing. On the side, we've got the micro USB standard port which is really nice for charging and data. And in fact, the charger that comes with the device is actually a standalone charger module with the USB cable that plugs into it. It's really nice. Volume controls here, camera shutter button. Uh, one gaff here is it's a two and a half millimeter headset port, so it's not a standard 3.5 millimeter port, which you could use regular stereo headphones with. So you have to use some sort of adapter that's not included. It's, it's a very poor decision on LG's part. Up top here we have a lock button and obscured right inside here by the hinge is the micro SD slot. Um, putting the QWERTY module on the device definitely makes it thicker. You know, the back's a little bit different, a little bit thicker, and the front pad definitely adds a bit of girth to it. But when it opens up and it's spring loaded, it's really in a nice orientation. It's really a good angle to use and the balance really isn't that bad. It stays open and closed you know, with a pretty nice spring to it. You can see it wants to stay open or stay closed which is it's, it's really it's good design. I'm very pleased with the keyboard in general and you can also see of course that the phone works in landscape or portrait modes while the keyboard's attached. When the keyboard is removed it works only in portrait mode. The new Versa has a number of nice screen transition effects. You'll see if we press the lock button here, it brings up the lock screen. We can either press on the lock there or press the button again twice and you see the nice scrolling, peeling you know, transition. Same kind of effects you get when you change the orientation of the device. And also, one of the things, you'll see these four little dots here. This implies that there are actually four home screens you can work with and you can just swipe through them. You can see it's like a rotating block form factor. Right here is the media panel, so you can select songs, pictures, videos, bookmarks, whatever you want, and put them, put them onto this uh, home screen view. This one's for shortcuts, for applications, things like that. This is all for contacts, so you just press on a contact and you can quickly you know, send a message, place a call, or pull up the contact record for you know, our buddy Albert Einstein here. Anywhere in the system you can hit the back arrow like this, but you can also use the clear button on the credit keyboard as a back. And of course there's the hardware button up here as well, so there's a lot of options there. This particular home screen is only available when the keyboard module is attached. 
Um, when you have the keyboard module off, there's only three home screens. This one just has a couple of shortcuts and some basic features like you know, email, IM, the browser, notepad. We're going to take a look at the camera on the Versa. We're going to activate it by holding down the shutter button for a second. See the lens is up here in the upper right hand corner, so you have to be careful when you're holding it. Get a nice set of options here if you just tap on the screen. So you can easily change white balance or you know, metering mode, face detection, or the resolution. You can see it's a 2 megapixel camera, so it goes up to 1600 by 1200. To take the photo, you just tap on the shutter button or on the take button here on the screen, it'll automatically focus and then snap the photo, at which point we can save it. Switch to video mode. You have the same kind of controls. Tap on the screen. You can see that we can record in VGA resolution video, which is pretty nice. We'll start up the recording. And there it goes. Move around a bit and you can see that we're actually shooting the video. We'll stop it. Save it. And then we'll take a look at how you can add that to the screen here. What we're going to do is we're going to press on this little gear down here in the corner. And it's going to allow us to add media. In this case, we're going to add a video. And we'll add this newest one. So now it's on the screen. We just tap on it. Oops, first of all, we have to hit done. Now I tap on it to activate it. There it goes. Move around a bit. You can see that we're actually shooting the video. Stop it. And when you want to get rid of it, again, you hit the gear. Then you just drag it over to the trash can and remove it from the media home screen. Again, click done. Nice system. The other tabs work the same way in terms of you know adding and removing things.